All right, folks, uh, Larry R. I am back with a uh, brisket. Today I'm going to be doing a high heat brisket. Uh, I've got about a 12 and a half pound packer. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, with a packer, uh, I wasn't when I first started. You'll see on the left hand side we have the flat, right hand side we have the point. Uh, I do not, well, I take that back. I was going to say I don't, tr I don't trim my, uh, my briskets. I trim probably half of my briskets. Uh, this one I elected not to. I'm not feeling real well today, so if I don't see my normal jovial self, it's uh, got some sort of a summer cold or something going on. I'll, uh, I'll get a few Miller Lights in me later. I'll be feeling okay, I think. Uh, anyway, so uh, I didn't trim this brisket. Uh, I am going to go with uh, coffee, what's called coffee cardamom rub. And uh, let me see if I can focus in on that. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's coffee, you know, fresh ground coffee, cardamom, ginger, uh, kosher salt, and paprika. Oh, and, uh, brown sugar as well. And uh, a little bit of, uh, oh, ground garlic is, uh, pardon me, uh, chopped garlic as well. Then you throw it all in the food processor and it makes a little bit of heaven. This rub right here I got from, uh, one of us, I believe it was Stephen Rachelin, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, uh, Rachelin's uh, books. I think it's actually his, uh, his son-in-law or stepson. I, I, I could be wrong. could be mixing authors here. But anyway, it's uh, some barbecue guy's stepson's uh, recipe, and it's, it's wonderful if you're, if you're into coffee. Now, one warning, it, you won't get a uh, great bark with the uh, rub because you uh, mix it with some vegetable oil. Uh, but you, the, the flavor is wonderful, and I'm doing this brisket high heat, so uh, I'm not that worried about uh, bark anyway. I'm not going to get a great bark. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rub this baby down, and I will uh, then go out to the cooker. The Komodo Komodo is warming up, and uh, the luckiest woman in the world just walked in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> if you hear some noise in the background, uh, she's home. So I'm going to uh, warm up the Komodo Komodo to 325, and we will be doing this uh, brisket over, I'm thinking, uh, red wine uh, oak cask staves. I don't know why I always have a hard time saying that. But uh, anyway, I will see you guys after I rub this uh, baby down. All right, she is rubbed. And uh, this thing smells amazing. Another thing I wanted to point out uh, that I neglected to prior to getting her rubbed down was uh, for anybody new at briskets, as, as I was at one time, I couldn't figure out how the heck to slice this thing. Uh, be sure to notice which way the grain is running. And in this case, the grain is actually running, I'll try this, it's running this way. Sorry guys, this, this way. So I'm going to slice this way right there. So uh, anyway, I uh, got this baby ready to roll. I am going to go outside and get the uh, cooker going. It uh, should be pretty much ready to go. I just need to uh, top it off, throw some uh, some wood in there, and uh, get my get my setup. I'm going. I do a uh, indirect, so I'll have a uh, deflector as well as a drip pan. Uh, so we'll see you outside. Just got her on, and uh, going with a mixture of lump and rancher. Uh, when I came out here, she was sitting about 350. Just got the meat on, so she is coming up to temp. Uh, let's see if we can see. Yeah, so she's just barely coming up. I literally just closed this. So uh, let me go ahead. I'll, I'll open her up real quick so you guys can have a gander. So it might be kind of tough to see with the light and the smoke and everything. Try to get a good shot of her. I don't know if, we, I don't know if this is going to work or not. But uh, anyway... Uh, so I'm going indirect. I like to put a piece of tinfoil under the front of my brisket, the, the flat side, just to make sure that it doesn't uh, burn. You know, the edges are a little bit hotter. I don't put anything on the point because I'm going to burn it anyway for burn ends. So i uh, got my uh, Maverick ET73 going. I'm not going to use stoker on this one. It's pretty much a piece of cake to keep this thing at 325, which is the, the temp I'm looking for. So uh, just going to let her uh, go for probably, I mentioned three hours. I'm going to let her hit about 165, and then I'm going to go ahead and 
put her in a, uh, a pan, a foil pan, and foil her, and cook her for probably another two hours. And uh, it'll be a five to six hour brisket. And uh, the other reason I was doing high heat, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, uh, I, I picked up this brisket at the last minute, smart and final, and it, it was select. So on a select brisket, I, I far prefer uh, high fast. If I was doing prime grade or uh, Wagyu, I would definitely go low and slow. But uh, for a select brisket, in my opinion, for you know, I'm not that good, so uh, I dry a, a select brisket out pretty easily going low and slow. Uh, so I will uh, check back with you in a little while. All right, folks, uh, it's been, let me look at my watch here, about 42 minutes. And she is stabilized, temps are good, and uh, I'm looking at the Maverick. She's sitting at 330. Uh, I'm shooting for 325, so I'm good with that. Uh, brisket's sitting at 89 degrees. It's pretty windy out here. You can probably hear that. Uh, I'm going to try to shade that mic. You can probably hear it from the mic. Uh, getting a little more smoke than I wanted, however, you know, it is a high heat cook, so what are you going to do, right? Uh, so anyway, things are going well so far. Uh, like I said, we are, we're pinned at uh, just under 330, perfect temperature in terms of where I want to be. And then uh, I'll show you the ET-73. Uh, strategically resting against my Miller Lite bottles. So uh, the brisket sitting at 90. Now the interesting thing about the uh, the ET73 is that I do have. If you take a look at the probe, it's it's fairly close to the meat. So that uh, temperature is about 50 degrees less right now. Than that dome temp, but uh, the two once that meat gets heated up, the two will get relatively close. So I'm going I'm going by the cooker temperature now, and later in the cook I'll be going by the ET73. So anyway, uh, just thought I'd give you guys an update. Uh, you know, about 45 minutes in, uh, everything's looking uh, really good. Talk to you later. All right, folks, I'm back. I said that it would take, oh geez, can you, can you see that? There we go. Hold on. I'm trying to adjust, nah. That says 302. Anyway, I said it'd uh, be done about 302, or, or about three hours we'd be ready to go. Uh, Komodo Komodo is pegged at 330, which I'm cool with. And a uh, little light smoke, don't know if you can see that, but uh, hold on, I'm going to turn you. So, <clears throat> the uh, brisket's sitting at 167, and uh, like I said, I thought it would take about three hours to get to 165, so, um, hey, I've done this a couple times, what can I say? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the brisket, put it in a uh, pan, and a, uh, like a roasting pan, foil it, and uh, throw her back on probably only two more hours and then we'll be fork tender so uh, anyway interesting thing is the uh, the uh, Maverick ET73 I think I've got a problem with my uh, with my pit probe because it's all over the place I don't know if you can see that or not but it's jumping all over the place so uh, might be time for a new Maverick ET73 it's been uh, been about five years so probably uh, probably time for a new one so let's go over and open the cooker. Oh, and for those of you who uh, are, are interested, let me show you the bottom vent on the Komodo Komodo. So that's what I'm sitting at to maintain uh, 330. And then the vent position, let me show you what that looks like. So that is where the current vent position is. That's closed. So, a little bit tighter there, but anyway, so that's, that's the only air movement that we have going on here to maintain three, uh, 330. So, let's go ahead and open this, check out the brisket. Oh, man, if you guys could smell this, let me see if I can get a better 
pitcher here. Man, if you guys could smell this brisket, oh, it's money. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and foil this. I'll uh, come back and show you guys what she looks like uh, in the roasting pan.